This is lecture number 7 from our online SEM training series. In this lecture, I'll explain you how to perform a confirmatory factor analysis in MOS. Confirmatory factor analysis is used to test whether measures of a construct are consistent with the researcher's understanding of the nature of that construct or factor. In other words, the objective of confirmatory factor analysis is to test whether the data fit a hypothesized measurement model. This hypothesized model is based on theory and previous analytic research. The data set in this example contains hypothetical responses from 200 students on six items from a survey on school students. The six items ask students to rate their liking for different subjects including biology, geology, chemistry, algebra, calculus and statistics. The value of each of these items range from 1 which shows strong dislike for the subject to 5 which shows strong liking for the subject. In confirmatory factor analysis, the researcher first develops a hypothesis about the factors that he or she believes are underlying the measures he or she has used. Further, he or she may impose constraints on the model based on these a priori hypothesis. By imposing these constraints, the researcher is forcing the model to be consistent with his or her theory. For example, if it is hypothesized that there is just one factor accounting for the covariance in the measures, the researcher can create a model where all the measures load on a single factor. Model fit measures could then be obtained to assess how well the proposed model captured the covariance between all the items or measures in the model. If the model specified is inconsistent with the sample data, then the results of statistical tests of model fit will indicate a poor fit and the model will be rejected. If the fit is poor, it may be due to wrong specification within the model or it might also be that some items within a factor are more correlated to each other than others. So now let's proceed and test our first confirmatory model. So we will be following these five steps while performing our confirmatory factor analysis. The first step in confirmatory factor analysis is model specification. So we will use MOS to specify our hypothesized model. First of all, we will go to the view tab and select interface properties to change the orientation of our MOS window from portrait to landscape. Landscape orientation provides more space while specifying the model. Then we select the measurement model icon and specify our hypothesized confirmatory model. So this is our hypothesized confirmatory fact model which has got one latent variable and six indicators. Next we go to the data files and select our input data sheet. So this is our input data sheet. We select and open the input data sheet. Next we can find the variables in the data set from the variable list and by then from the variables list we can label our measurement model by dragging and dropping the variables. We will label our latent variable as sub subject liking. Further using the plugins, we can label our error terms. So we have specified our measurement model with one latent variable and six indicator variables. Next step is identification. We can see that there are a total of six indicator variables which implies that 
in total we have 21 pieces of information from the measurement model we can estimate that we have to estimate a total of 12 parameters which includes six variances associated with the error terms five factor loadings associated with five items and a variance term associated with the latent variable the initial degrees of freedom we have is 9 which is more than 0 indicating that our model is identifiable next we proceed further and estimate the parameters of this measurement model before estimating the parameters we go to the view tab select analysis properties go to the output tab and select few more parameters that we will require during our model re-specification phase we select the modification indices, the residual movements, the test of normality and outliers, standardized estimates. Okay. So we have specified the model and we have tested that our model is identifiable. Next step is to estimate the model parameters. To estimate the model parameters, we click on calculate estimates. So we can see that minim, minimum was achieved. It means the solution converged and resulting in an overall chi-square value of 266 with 9 degrees of freedom. So now let us explore the model fit indices for our hypothesized measurement model. The GFI value is 0.731 which is less than the threshold value of 0.9 the CFI value is 0.583 which is again less than the threshold value of 0.9 the p-value is insignificant indicating that model is not a good fit the RMR value is less than 0.05 again we can see that the RSMEA value is quite high so we can conclude that the hypothesized model does not fit the data well. So the test of model fit indicates a poor fit and the model and the model requires a re-specification. In order to re-specify the model, we'll look at the modification indices. In confirmatory factor analysis, we can covary the error term we can specify a covariance between the error terms so from the modification indices we can see that if there is a covariance between error 2 and error 3 it results in an overall change of 127 in the chi-square value so I'll go ahead and specify a covariance between error 2 and error 3 and I again run the model again if I look at the results the CFI value is now above 0.9 the GFI value is above 0.9 however the RMR value is still less than still more than 0.05 similarly the RSMEA value is quite high again we go to the modification indices and specify a modification index and specify a covariance between error term 1 and error term 2 again if I look at the modif model fit I can see that the GFI and CFI are okay but the RMR value is less than the is more than the threshold value similarly the RSME value is greater than the threshold value Again, I'll go to the modification indices and specify a covariance between error term 1 and error term 3. Okay, so now I look at the model fit. We can see that the C min value is now insignificant 
which indicates that the data fits the model again the gfi value and the cfi value are above the threshold value of 0.9 indicating again a good fit the rmr value is less than 0 0.05 again suggesting that the data fits the model also the r rmsca value is less than the threshold value of 0 0.05 indicating that the data fits the model well so we can see that the model fit statistics indicate a good fit and the model and the hypothesized model fits the data so you so in this so in this lecture i have explained you how to run a basic confirmatory factor model using these five steps which includes model specification model identification model estimation model assessment and model re-specification in the next lecture we will look at another confirmatory factor analysis example to understand the concept more in more detail if you are looking for online SEM training or support please contact us at admin at the rate